So today, I'm gonna test the Milwaukee 3 8 torque wrench. Now I did pick this up from Home Depot for roughly $700. This is tool only, they do offer it in a kit, and they also do offer half inch. Comes in this nice blow molded case with a carrying handle. Inside the case, there is this slot here. I don't think it was designed to hold the battery, but it does seem to hold it quite well there for storage. So inside the case, there is a quick start guide here. More instructions in detail. So after reading through this, one thing I didn't really care for is under accuracy certification. No, once tool has exceeded 5,000 cycles, the tool will be out of certification and will expire after 14 days. So to me, that sounds like this tool shuts down and you're gonna to have to send it out to Milwaukee to get it recalibrated. It does come with a certification certificate here and it is all under plus or minus 2%, which is what this torque wrench is supposed to rate as. Now, if we look at some of the specs here, weight five pounds, basically 10 ounces, with a torque range of 10 to 100 foot pounds. Now with the half inch, it does go up to 150 foot pounds. It is of course made in China. Ratchet mechanism is 80 tooth. Ratcheting speed is supposed to be 100 RPM, which is pretty much right on. You do have an LED light right there, lock. Now, of course, this has one key, coin cell battery under this cover. We have the LED indication, how close we're getting to the torque spec. Then we have a nice color screen, four movement arrows, okay in the center, your power button, your back button, and then your save button right here. After you've torqued something to spec, you can save it. That way you can print a sheet later on showing, hey, I torqued all these to spec. So at the top, we have our menu, then we have our battery indication. Of course, it shows us in quick mode. If we go up to that, if we had additional modes saved, up to 15 modes here, pretty simple in quick mode. You're just gonna hit the okay, select it, and then scroll as needed. Okay, saves it. Right below we have range, if we hit okay, I've got it set plus or minus there, 1%. This is not the accuracy of this torque wrench. This is the indication of what range you wanna to try to be in. So we're on the right, we can look at that data that we stored from torquing. If we go back to the menu on the top, we have modes, saved events. That's where you're gonna have that recorded data. Settings, units. What's interesting here is we only have four. Typically you would see five on a normal torque wrench. Sound, so you can turn the light on and off, which would be here. You can turn sound on and off. And of course you can turn the vibration on and off. Screen brightness, high, medium, low. Screen display, you do have dark screen mode, which we'll go back out here. I think looks pretty good. Rundown torque. so. Supposedly, you can run this ratchet head and it will stop at the torque, which would be 100% here, or you can reduce this to, you know, say 90%. Once it gets to 90% of your desired torque, it will stop. And then you're gonna, of course, pull on the torque wrench about. So under certification, date certified, and how many cycles, I have cycled this a little bit. So you can see we do have 15 cycles out of 5,000 on this. Frameware, you know, the version and the part number. Now, like I mentioned, it does have one key. Universal settings, pretty much some of that same stuff that's in this menu here. Those modes, so you can add those modes instead of having to select them actually on the torque wrench. Event history, here's where if we recorded some of those torques here, they would display that data. Pretty much the same information from here just displayed on your phone. That being said, I think it's time we go ahead and put this on the test stand, see how it performs. So like normal here, got the snap-on tester, accuracy of plus or minus 0.5%. So we got her set at 25 here, at dark mode, so it's a little easier for you to see.
Wow, 27.27. 27. This thing is way off. I can hear you right now saying that can't be, so get the snap on out here. There you have it. Wow, we are way over again. So here we have the snap on again. How about a cheap Pittsburgh? Is this more accurate than that Milwaukee? So I did already warm up cycle it. There you go, there's three hits. Right on the money. Let's go ahead and do 100. Still, yeah, it's in the green, but again, this is plus or minus 4%. So I've got my rundown bolt here. We're gonna go ahead and test this so-called rundown feature, see what the max torque we can get out of this is. Now, again, that was set at 100%. We've got this set at the max 100 foot-pounds. We'll run this bolt down. So we'll use the snap-on torque wrench to see how much force it does take to back the fastener off. And we maxed out at 32. So now becomes the question, what happens if we set this to 25? We go ahead and do the same process. Did it actually torque this to 25? Nine. Yeah, nine. So even at 100%, it didn't even get 50% of that torque value. All right, so I completed my 1,000 cycles like normal. We're gonna go ahead and test again, see if it changed at all. Wow. So here's that before and after data. Yeah, downright horrible. I mean, it's supposed to be plus or minus 2%. It's not even plus or minus 4%. You're better off spending that $700 on this snap-on torque wrench. But what's hilarious is this $20 Pittsburgh torque wrench from Harbor Freight is more accurate than this $700 Milwaukee. You know, even that rundown function didn't seem to work very well. And another thing to point out, this doesn't do angle, so it wouldn't be very good in an application of, say, assembling engines. Overall, I wish I wasn't past the 30 days and could return this to Home Depot. Now I'm gonna have to play the game, get in contact with Milwaukee and send it out. If you have one, I would definitely recommend taking getting it tested if you care about the accuracy because from my results from this yeah it's it's not there so i don't know who's calibrating these in china but they might want to check on that thanks for watching hopefully you found this video useful and i'll catch you on another one